it may not be where you think. There's more than one way to answer this question. Today I'll show you how the hearing part of the brain is not the source of the nerve signals that seem to cause tinnitus, at least not alone. The answer today comes from Dr. Winfried Schlee of the University of Konstanz in Munich area, Germany. The answer to this question is really important. So think of fighting tinnitus like fighting a fire. You see a flame, you squirt water on it, right? How hard can it be? Well, of course, it depends on whether it's a water or oil-based fire. It makes a big difference. But tinnitus solutions along that line of thought are for a future episode. Today, it's a, the important lesson is to focus our efforts on and at the source of the fire. Because putting out a fire doesn't work if you squirt the flame. But don't address the source of the flame. Let's go find that source. Many nervous system researchers today think that the source of the solutions for several neurological conditions cannot be found at a single site. They believe the solution lies in understanding the network, the interconnectedness of several brain regions. Here's an example I think we can all relate to uh, that will help you understand how networks work in general. Then we can apply that understanding to tinnitus network. Think of having a memory of, let's say, your high school graduation or your wedding day. Think of that day right now. You remember the clothes, the colors, textures, emotions, smells, conversations, and more. It's incredibly complex, the memories that brings up. And where do those memories come from? Memories, as we understand it, are primarily housed in our hippocampus, which is composed of a bunch of neurons. So, is there a neuron dedicated to the smells of that day? Well, no. What about the textures? Well, no, not that either. We think memories may be indexed in the hippocampus, but then they're pulled from all over the brain and they're synced together by brain waves like radio waves or cell phone carrier wave reassembling the information from their respective areas around the brain. It's really a beautiful mechanism. There's a lot we could explore with this and a lot we don't know yet. But the point is that just as memories don't reside entirely in the memory part of the brain, this study tells that tinnitus tells us that tinnitus seems not to reside entirely in the hearing part of the brain. Here are the facts from this study. I provide some more technical details in the um, written below in the description. So compared to controls, the tinnitus patients had very distinct types and amounts of brainwave activity at rest. The temporal lobe is where we perceive sound, including tinnitus. The more brainwave activity they found flowing into the temporal lobe from other brain regions, the stronger the tinnitus distress in people. The brainwave activity they found flowing into the temporal lobe, the hearing area, originated from the very front and the very back parts of the brain. Interesting. Are these areas the primary source of tinnitus? Or are they an attempt to correct the dysfunction? They couldn't tell from the research. Well, let's take a closer look at what these brain sources do in most people on a daily basis. The front brain source is where we generate what is called executive function. It deals with the highest levels of planning, deciding, acting, and controlling actions toward a chosen goal. Think of it as the boss, the executive. The back brain source is primarily where we compile first-person memories and vision. Interesting, so executive functions first-person memories and vision areas seem to be driving activity in the temporal lobe and strongly correlated with tinnitus distress, like how bad it feels. So, of course, it's not this simple, but it's wonderfully helpful hint. As the authors conclude, tinnitus therapy needs to fight on two front lines at the same time, reducing the hyperactivity in the auditory cortex on the one hand and changing the global network on the other hand. So, our question for today, did we find the source of the fire, the source of the tinnitus? Of course, there's not just one source, which is which my regular followers of Synergy know well. But yes, we definitely found a source. So, what can we use now from this study? Well, first, be realistic when you try a single tinnitus therapy. There are several approaches that help. Tinnitus retraining, 
cognitive behavioral therapy, auditory discrimination therapy, meditation, neuromodulation, nutrition, trigger point therapy, etc. A combination is what you need to start looking for. So what about future applications? So our approach needs to be local and specific to the auditory cortex and global, addressing the contribution of the full brain. And I would add, not from this study, but um, a systemic approach as well, addressing nutrition. So it, will anyone really do what it takes to thoroughly address their tinnitus effectively? I think so. Sure, there are many people that just want some pill to fix it for them, but as with other chronic health conditions, those that suffer badly and want a natural approach that won't give bad side effects are willing to do the hard work for a naturally healthy body and brain. It may just, a matter of, may, it may just be a matter of making it available in a more efficient package. So in the next episode, I'll discuss transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, as a way of breaking the maladaptive synchrony to reduce tinnitus. We'll also consider, does every effective treatment change brain synchrony? So I'd like to know your thoughts, so please leave a comment or request a review of a particular research study. To stay connected to tinnitus research and therapy applications, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to be notified of new therapies and video postings, click the bell and subscribe to our email newsletter at tinnitusenergy.com. Thank you, and may God bless you.